What's going on everybody? This is Creepy Crawling at the Ghost Town of Daniels, Maryland Part 2. We were actually able to get across the river this time. It required a 5 mile hike, but it was worth it. We both needed the exercise and had nothing else better to do. Nah, I'm just kidding. We were both really looking forward to getting back there and I was actually very excited to put this video together. I've been waiting to get back there for a long time. So this was the first odd thing that we saw, was this cross wedge into this log, and Hot Rod later in the day said maybe there was a scavenger hunt going on, because we did find a few other oddly placed things like that, like somebody intentionally left it for it to be found. Breaking that new body! There's four layers of paint on there. The second odd thing that we found was this car laying in the creek bed, belly up. It's obviously had been there for quite some time. Look at those old shops. Little Bill Steins. <laughs> that shot's still good, dude. Yeah, man. This thing is totally salvageable. That has great significant that's, uh, the, the historical value. That's the, where the, uh, the front of the hood. The front of the hood, yeah, it latches down. You know, it only seemed odd that the car was there because of the way it was positioned. You know, when you see that it washed down this creek, looking at it in the present day, it's all woods. There used to be dozens and dozens of houses along this trail. And the direction that the car came from was where those houses were. It's like you can still see some of the interior in there. A lot of tetanus. Yeah, lots of tetanus. Wes, can we wet it? Am I right that on there? Yeah. Look at the crack in that bridge. This little bridge here used to be part of Alberton Road, which is now the trail that leads you to the ruins. So a little further down Alberton Road, aka the trail, if you look off to your left across the river you'll see this tractor trailer trailer just turned over. It's been there for since the flood I guess. A lot of these field type areas that you see us driving down used to be full of houses and industry. I'm not sure exactly what this foundation here is. I'm assuming it was part of the textile mill. You know, as you're going through some of those other areas where there's trees and a lot of grass and overgrowth, you know, you find odds and ends in there. It's kind of interesting. I don't recommend walking through there barefoot. And if you got your dog, I would definitely keep them on the trail. I wouldn't let them wander and run around through there. In case you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link to it in the description below, but Daniels was founded in 1839 and Hurricane Agnes wiped out what was left of it in 1972. All the homes and everything that were there were actually owned by the company and they had started closing or rather removing a lot of the homes before 1972 with the intention of closing down everything and Hurricane Agnes helped expedite that process of removing the homes. They had started removing homes around 1968 with the intention of removing the remaining ones and giving the land to the state of Maryland for the Patapsco Valley State Park. There were many economic reasons why they wanted to close everything down and give the, the land away to the state. There were also environmental factors. Oddly enough in 1868 there was a large flood that occurred then that damaged the mill and a lot of the housing as well. Like a hundred year flood I mean, it's a little creepy that it happened again in 1972. I mean, that's pretty much dead on schedule for a hundred years. 1868, 1972, 
That's a little creepy. I like how that tree is just held up by the vines. Right there. <laughs> you like that? That's impressive. And now that I think about it, it's even creepier that they started removing the houses in 1968, exactly 100 years after that major flood. Did they know something? That's a little weird. There's really not a lot left there, but there's still a lot left there, if that makes any sense. If you think about it, there's 110 families that supposedly lived here. These remains are actually of the Pentecostal Holiness Church. Yeah, I wouldn't either. You don't want to climb the bell tower? Nah, I don't want to fall in on it. Everybody. Daniels actually had its own power plant, and this is the remains of the hydroelectric dam. The power plant's long gone, but the dam still stands. There are many dams along the Patapsco River, and environmental factors played a huge role in shutting them down. Apparently the river produces a lot of silt, which increased operational costs to all the dams. If they're clogged with silt and need to be maintained more regularly, then they're not producing electricity or money. This is actually our first run with the Enduro Trail Walker having the Forerunner body on it. We would taken it out before with the Trail Honcho type body, but this is the first time we took it out with the Forerunner body. I think it looks awesome. Um, Hot Rod painted it himself. I think it looks amazing.
scavenger hunt memorabilia? I don't know. This is the trail going up to the St. Stannis Claus Costa Catholic Church. I hope I pronounced all that right. Some more carnage. Some more carnage. The St. Stanislaus Costa Catholic Church was built in 1878. In 1927, almost 50 years after it was built, it was struck by lightning and burned down. The stone walls are all that remain of it, and most of those are falling down as well. As I was researching this location and looking at dates, of things that have happened here. You know, the town was founded in 1829. This church got struck by lightning and burned down in 1927. You had an epic flood in 1868, and then another epic flood in 1972. Seems like since the town was founded every hundred years or so, something odd happens here. And if you look a little further down the map, you'll notice that there's Ellicott City. Now, if you're not too familiar with Maryland, look up Ellicott City floods. Pretty epic. Same area. Could Ellicott City end up someday just like Daniel's? I don't know. That's kind of creepy to think about it. I made it most of the way. You know, I remember coming across a few articles and information saying that at the time that the church burned down there was a hundred thousand dollar ring inside of it that that was never found we certainly didn't find a hundred thousand dollar ring but we did find this fire ring that looks like it's pretty frequently used not sure who's up there having bonfires you know just a few miles down the street from here was a place called henryton and it was an african-american tuberculosis hospital later turned into an asylum for the mentally unfit. They bulldozed it a few years ago, and I've walked around that place a few times before they tore it all down, and I got really creeped out going through there. You could just tell bad things happened there, but to be honest, this place, I actually felt kind of at peace. It's very strange. No heebie-jeebies. It's very calming, very relaxing up here on this hill in this church. Spins off and I get more derailed, derailed. Just you know, I'm not a religious person, but uh, I do believe in energy. And maybe this is why they built this church here. Because even going to the graveyard, it was peaceful, almost soothing. It's very strange. I don't know how else to explain it.
So we did roughly five miles with the crawlers and hiking. Uh, both trucks used two 3S LiPos apiece. Hot Rods actually, his second one started dying just as we were getting to the car. We weren't sure if it was going to make it or not, but it made it. Crawled on the backtrack on the scene to get me crawled in on. 